Hi there. Great to have you guys back. Um, let us now discuss what transconductance is all about. Transconductance. Um, I'm guessing that you've watched the videos on uh, the equation of a equation of current in a MOSFET or at least you're aware of the equation of current in a MOSFET. If not, uh, please do so right away. It's just that you want you will be able to better take part in this discussion. Um, when you talk about transconductance, let us first look at a MOSFET. A MOSFET converts whatever gate voltage you apply into an effective current. How? If you look at it, you have the source, you have the drain, and you have a channel here, right? You're going to have electrons flowing inside the channel based on a certain gate voltage uh, applied. Of course, it'll, it'll pass over the oxide and then be effective, so the effective voltage is always VGS minus VTH, VTH being the threshold voltage. So, um, as in anything in the world, if you give any device or anything any input, you would love to know what the output is, correct? Having said that, you would also, now that we know um, in a MOSFET, what is the input? The input is the gate voltage and the output is a drain current. Now that you know input and output, you would also like to know as to how much output is received or how much output is obtained for a given input, correct? What is this output over input ratio called? It's called efficiency of any device of anything in the universe. Likewise, for our MOSFET, we're going to define an efficiency parameter, and that is called transconductance. What it means is you're going to be looking at how much current you get based on the gate voltage you apply. Right? This is the input, this is the output. Matches the efficiency definition. So transconductance is nothing but the efficiency or the sensitivity of your MOSFET. Now, um, because we're dealing with signals in analog electronics, you would deal with the difference in current produced based on the difference in voltage, in the gate voltage. Uh, why we talk in terms of difference, we can come back to that later. It's not really important for this discussion. But what is important is you understand that uh, transconductance only means the amount of current you're producing based on um, the gate source voltage you're applying. Okay, let's look at a small example as to. Um, so now that this is uh, uh, understood, we also put a little condition here. When VDS, the drain to source voltage, remains constant. So if you look at an example, you go to a MOSFET vendor and he says, hello there, I've got a MOSFET here that has a high GM. What do you get by that? If, it, if, he, if someone says, my MOSFET has a high GM, that means in this equation your numerator, let me take a different color, your numerator is high, correct? That's when your GM can go high. If your numerator is high, obviously, relatively speaking, your denominator is low, correct? That means for a small change in VGS, I'm getting a large change in the current, correct? And that's what we desire is that the MOSFET is really sensitive to the <coughs> um, to the input 
that we are giving it. Right? So GM is a measure of the sensitivity of a MOSFET. All right. Now we try and put GM in different forms. I'll tell you why in just a short while, but let's look at it. We know from our current equation that ID is given by half mu n times C ox, of course, for the n mass we're discussing. W over L VGS minus VT. The whole sweat. Uh, this is the equation of current in a MOSFET when it's in saturation. All right, we're talking about GM when the MOSFET is in saturation. So this is ID, and if you look here, and we differentiate based on this equation with respect to VGS, what do you get? So what we have to do now is delta ID over delta VGS. So what do you get if you differentiate? Half times, all these are constants, correct? Let me take a different color. Half times mu n c ox w over l two times vgs minus vt. Two, two get canceled. All you're left with is mu n times c ox times w over l times VGS minus VT. VT or VTH, it really doesn't matter, it's the same. So what was this? Delta ID over delta VGS, which is equal to GM. Correct? Now, um, let us look at why we have derived this new form instead of the simple delta ID over delta VGS. We have derived it because we want to check the performance of the MOSFET in different conditions. For example, in this equation, what you see is if I keep, uh, well, there's no question about keeping mu n and c ox constant. They are going to be constant because that they are decided when you decide on the manufacturing process of your MOSFET. Okay, so it is given that they are constant. And you're right now designing circuits, so maybe you can change your W, the width or length. But here, for now, let us consider even these are constant. What would happen to GM if your VGS were to go high? GM would increase, obviously. Even VT is constant because it's the pressure, which doesn't change. So. If you were to plot GM with respect to VGS minus VT with W over L constant, I repeat, mu n and C ox are going to be considered constant. So what do you see from this equation? When VGS goes up, GM goes up. When it goes down, GM goes down. And it's a linear relationship. There's no square or third ter cubic term there. That means with VGS, GM is going to increase in a straight line. Right? Now let's look at it. I'm going to give you a small exercise. But I will give you, I mean, uh, so it's a different form of GM. Grab a different color. Okay. It is given by root of two times mu n times c ox times w over l times id okay it is very simple to derive you just have to work on the previous equations i've given you in this discussion but if you were to analyze this uh, equation what do you see mu n is constant c ox is constant w over l is constant again if and if you had to plot this on a graph, what would you get? Uh, let me take a different color again. You would get GM versus ID graph, correct? Now, these are constant. Again, with an increase in ID, your GM is going to increase. But of course, there won't be a linear relationship because ID is under the square root, okay? But nonetheless, 
with an increase in ID you're going to have an increase in GM so your graph looks something like this it has a certain, it has a certain curve okay all right, all right. let's look at a, another form again this is as an exercise for you GM equals 2 ID over VGS minus VT again if you see here what happens is if you keep your drain current constant and if you look at the variation of GM with VGS and VT what do you understand with an increase in VGS you're going to have a decrease in GM. Why? Because this, this is in the denominator. The denominator increases, the whole thing reduces in value. So if we were to plot this on a graph, what would we get? VGS minus VT, GM with ID constant. It gives us a graph that looks like this. Okay? So that is the reason we look at various forms of GM. Okay, I will write all those forms again so that um, you can note it down. Oh, we're out of paper here, but let me. Okay. Um, okay. All right. So let me write down the different forms of GM that we've looked at today. Delta ID over delta VGS is the most basic form of it when VDS is constant. GM is also equal to mu n times C ox times W over L times VGS minus this is S minus VT. Forgive me for my bad handwriting, please. GM is also equal to root of Two times mu n times c ox times w over l times id. GM is also equal to two times id over vgs minus vt. These four forms are important and always keep them in mind. You don't have to really get them off by heart or anything. It's enough if you understand. So what again? As we saw the graphs for each of these cases. What these help you in understanding is suppose some term is constant. I know how my GM varies based on how one parameter of the circuit varies. Correct? And that is how it helps you to understand the efficiency or the sensitivity of a MOSFET. All right, it was great discussing this topic with you. I hope you found it useful. I'll catch up with you later. Thanks.